In this video, we're going to look at a question from Majestic Media on how we can get some nice soft shadows. So we can see a screenshot of a scene that was set up by Majestic Media here. And the areas we really want to focus on are going to be the noise that we're getting in the shadow here, in this area, as well as we're getting some the white uh, haloing effect around some of our objects here. Okay, so let's hop back into Maya. <coughs> and we can see I've set up a sample scene based off the settings that were provided by Majestic Media. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off by just rendering this out so we can see where it's at right now. Okay, so this is the scene we're working with. We can see we're getting some of that uh, graininess in our shadows as well as that white haloing around our objects. Okay, so I'm just going to save this render out. That way we can come back and compare to it. Now let's hop into our hypershade and take a look at some of the settings here. Now we're going to primarily focus on the two lights since these are the lights that are casting the shadows. They both have identical settings, so I'm just going to double click on one of them, open it up, and if we scroll down to we see the ray trace shadow attributes, this is primarily where we're going to want to focus. Now right now there's uh, zero light radius and the light radius is going to be what determines how soft the actual shadow is. So if we were to take this and bump this all the way up to one, and the result that we get back we can see we're getting much softer shadows here but we're really starting to see even more graininess to our shadows from previously. Okay, so uh, let's save this render out. And what we want to do is to bump up the shadow rays. Now right now with only one shadow ray, that's what's causing this graininess in our shadows. Because there's not enough rays for uh, metal ray or to know exactly how those shadows should be created. So what we want to do is to bump up the rays. Now when we do this, it's also going to rather significantly increase our render times. So we we'll want to be careful not to go too high. Let's start off by, say, maybe doing something like 10. And as we see, the result that we get, we're getting some nice, smooth shadows here, as compared to before or even uh, previously. So our shadows are getting smoothed out. But if we take a look at our render times here at the bottom, notice our render time has increased quite a bit. That's something to keep in mind when you bump up your shadow rays is that your render time is also going to increase. So let's save this render out. Now let's focus on seeing how we can get rid of this little white halo along the edges here. Now to do that, we're going to want to actually stay in the same uh, attributes here. We want to bump up the ray depth limit. Now the ray depth limit is going to be what determines how many times each ray can be reflected or refracted in order to cast the shadow. Now in this case we have some really highly reflective surfaces in this scene. So a ray depth limit of one isn't really going to give us the results that we want. So let's go ahead and just say bump this up to two just to see what difference that will give us. All right, and the result that we get back we can see we've eliminated some of the halo effect here. Well, there's still a little bit going on. Now, rather than coming back in and bumping up my ray depth a little bit even more, if you remember, we actually have two spotlights in this scene. So before I try increasing my ray depth limit, which as we noticed also increased our render times, let's come back into our second spotlight here and let's adjust the settings in here uh, to match our first light. I'm not going to increase the light radius. That way, uh, one of our lights will give us a little crisper shadow just to add a little variance. Okay, so let's save this render out. Now that we have our settings set in our second spotlight, and the result that we get is we no longer have this uh, white haloing effect around our objects. All right, so this is before and then after. But if we also notice our render time once again has bumped up just a little bit. So by increasing the number of shadow rays as well as the depth limit 
for those rays, we're able to get much smoother shadows and give us better results, albeit at the cost of some higher render times.